Welcome to the Indie Film NYC Podcast, where we help filmmakers merge the art and business of independent filmmaking. I'm your host, John Fallon. Welcome to episode number eight of the Indie Film NYC Podcast. My guest today is Shannon Ham, an actress who lives and works in New York City. I met Shannon a couple of years ago when she had a supporting role in one of the episodes of My New Roommate, a web series that I was directing. I think a lot of independent filmmaking books, websites, blogs, and podcasts spend a lot of time, rightly so, on the nuts and bolts of film production and focusing on the crew members that make up the production team. But they can have a tendency to forget about the people in front of the lens. The truth is, the most interesting movies can fail if there are not talented and charismatic actors that the audience can emotionally engage with and bring the director's vision to life. Coupled with the trend of actors taking agency over their career by themselves becoming filmmakers, I thought it important to bring to you some insight into the life of a working actor. Whether you're an actor yourself, trying to figure out how to navigate the stormy waters of studying, casting calls, and booking jobs, or a filmmaker who wants some insight into the actor's process, the experiences that Shannon reveals during our conversation will give you some information that you won't find in any filmmaking books. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to uh, IndieFilmNYC.com. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? Okay, great. That's easy enough. Um, so my name is Shannon Ham, and I am an actress, producer, spiritual teacher, um, all around jack of all trades <laughs> in New York City. Um, I came to New York when I was 18 years old and studied musical theater for two years at a conservatory. Um, Love musical theater, but really found my passion and my craft in film and TV. Um, I was asked to do a student film for someone at Marymount, just like as an extra, and I fell in love with the process and, and thought that, you know, this is something that I really want to pursue. I love the people. I love the, the collaborative efforts that everyone makes to put together, you know, a film. Um, and yeah, I just started running with it. I started taking networking classes and, and meeting casting directors and doing as, as many films as I could, whether that was low budget, indie student films, anytime I could be on a set, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, recently I just started producing some shorts and, and getting involved on the other side of things. Um, so yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell on the career side. <laughs> and so when did, when was, what year, I guess, around, was your first film? What, like, when did you get the bug? Um, I guess I got the bug in 2009, 2010. Okay. Yeah, that was when I got that Marymount short film and, um... Well, what was the film? What? Um... And what oh, was your role? It really was... Hold on. <laughs> I just was getting a call coming in. Um, my role in, in that film, it was like, um, I was a young mother and my son had, had been killed very, uh, we didn't really know how or why. Um, but I started dating and I met this guy and, and he had a son and it was like an interesting little Thing. It was only like 10 minutes long, and I really, in hindsight, had no idea what I was doing. Um, <laughs> but it was fun, and it was interesting to just, like I said, see the collaborative efforts of everyone, and especially on a student film set, because mm -hmm. it's like everyone's learning. No one really knows what's going on. Um, but that's where I think you learn the most. You know, you fall on your face, and you're with people that are in the mud with you and learning about what's going on. Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that film was. <laughs> it was so long ago. <laughs> and so, like, how did that change, like, your experience up until that point? Like, what what was so different about that for musical theater that you thought? Well, you know, I going to a conservatory for musical theater was just something that I had no idea what I was getting into until I got there. So I grew up in this really small town. We had a very small theater program. You know, I hadn't done anything like this ever. Um, and I think the thing that made me fall in love with it was seeing behind the scenes and how everything works and the process. And then finally seeing the finished product. It's like mm -hmm. this magical thing that happens. <laughs> Welcome um, to the podcast. Welcome to uh, IndieFilmNYC.com. It's just NYC. a different perspective. You know, you watch shows and, uh, on TV and you can like really get caught up in the world of whatever's going on. But then to kind of see it from a different 
perspective and see like I'm always watching things down like oh how did they shoot that how did they do that I wonder what that was like on set um so I just I guess my curiosity is what what's piqued my interest in, in doing it and, and wanting to learn more and, and how these different shots were created and how the actors got through this to make this happen and it's just it's all about the magic or the Hollywooding of it that I enjoy. Right. So, all right, so you uh, you did a couple of short films, and then uh, how did you, uh, once you left school, so so how did you start that, like, what was your first step on, on becoming a professional, like, the difference between doing student films and being a professional actress? Right. Well, I think as an actress in general or an actor, it, it all comes down to just consistently wanting to grow and learn and work on your craft, and it's all a mindset, you know, someone can say well, I'm not an actor yet because I'm only taking classes and I'm not, you know, doing a lot of professional things. My perspective is being an actor is all of those things. It's taking classes, it's doing student films, it's learning from each other. And, you know, the word professional, I guess, can get caught up in like, well, you know, you, you have people, for me, I grew up in a very small town. So people are like, well, what have I seen you in? <laughs> That's like the question that everyone asks. Sure. Um, and I think a lot of actors get that. And it's a very scary question for a lot of actors because we're like, well, um, and it's like this idea that society has of you or like, you know, if you're not a celebrity and I don't see you on TV and I don't go to, you know, AMC theaters and see you in this like giant production that you're not an actor. And the thing is, it's like that if you're doing the craft and you're working on yourself as an artist, then I say, yes, you are an actor. If you, you know, you're doing that. It's just, it's a, you know, you can be more than one thing. You, you don't have to say like, I'm defined by an actor. It's like, I'm an actress. I'm a wife. I'm a spiritual teacher. I, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, but I guess the first step, in jumping in for me, um, I just started talking to people and, and really learning how other people did it because there's no school that says you go A, B, C, and D, and that's how you get to the big films or the television sets or whatever that is. There's no, there's nothing written out that says how to do it. So you really have to network and, and talk to people and figure out how they did it. And their process may have been a little bit different, but you can pick and choose what you hear and it's kind of trial and error for what works and what doesn't work, right? Right. Um, so I heard about, you know, different casting sites, casting networks, backstage, Actors Access, you know, all of the main ones that most actors know about. Um, but being someone who had just came out of theater school and had no idea what any of this was. And 2010 was kind of like, I was still reading like paper backstage. Sure. <laughs> it was like right before the brink of like everything was online submissions. Like you would still send things in the mail. Um, so I'm sure now it might be a little bit different, but I think because it was on that cusp of time before, like right before everything was all online, everything's digital. Um, I had a little bit of navigating to do because no one really knew what was happening. So you were so, actually sending out like uh physical DVDs of yourself? Um, or what, what at that point, it was just headshots and resumes headshots in the mail. Um, because at that point, I had no footage. You know, okay. I had, like, this one student film that I did, and, you know, I didn't know how to work iMovie. I didn't know how to edit my own stuff. I had no clue what, sure. what I was doing. So it just comes down to, like, hey, I just got out of school. Here's my headshot and resume. I would love the opportunity to meet you. I heard you're doing this project. And kind of, like, seeing what stuck where. Um, but my first student film was through a friend of a friend mm -hmm. who referred me and was like, yeah, I think you should try this. And through that, that's when I started talking to people on set and someone was like, you should start doing background work, um, or being an extra. Um, and I was like, that's interesting. Um, I never thought of that. So I got online, I submitted for some stuff. I went to, um, uh, Central Casting, which is one of the main background casting offices in New York, got my little Polaroid picture taken, um, went into a few of the other offices and started getting called in. And my first professional thing, um, I was, I played a high school student on the final episode of the final season of the original Law and & Order. Oh, nice. And, that, and I was like, I had no idea what was going on. There were like 300 people that we were all like, playing high school kids there was like a shooter and I remember being on set for so many hours and 
and not really knowing what was going on and then waiting for the episode to come out. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll see myself. And literally, we shot that day for probably 8 to 10 hours, and what they used on the episode was maybe 30 seconds. So that, for me, was a huge, like, wow, this takes a lot of time. (laughs) This is a process. Um, But that day, I met met a few people that really were like, if this is what you want to do, these are the steps you can take. If you want to get in the union, these are the steps you should take. Um, And randomly... You know, I did a couple things here and there, and I was called in by, um, I think, C&G Casting was the name at the time. I think it's just Comer Casting now. Um, But they called me to work on this show. It was the second season called The Good Wife on CBS. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, they said, you know, wardrobe, if wardrobe likes what you bring in, they'll use you a lot. And I was like... (laughs) Oh, okay. And like I said, I had no idea. I had never done anything like this. So your acting job was predicated on your fashion. Uh, Exactly. (laughs) So here I am running around like H&M Forever 21 Express, like trying to find the cheapest but like cute looking clothes that might fit this wardrobe. And sure enough, they liked me and they kept calling me back. Um, And I ended up being there for six seasons, which is crazy. Um... You know, and and it is what it is. I was I was a background actor on that, and a lot of people get into the world of like, that's what they do as a full time living. Like, oh, I'm a background artist, and and that's fine, um, but that's not what I see myself doing for the rest of my life. But it was a an amazing eye opening experience for someone who had not gone to film school, who had never been on a set like that. Um, I met so many people on the crew that were just so willing to talk to me about what was going on. You know, I would just, it's that curiosity of like, well, what are, what are these guys doing over here with this light and what's this lingo? And you know, it's a whole nother language. Um, but through that, I learned even more about myself as, as an actress, as an artist, what I wanted to do, um, finding the courage and, the knowledge to produce now um because i i've seen it on that scale that it's like oh you know i can make a short film with less than one tenth of the people that (laughs) are used to make this tv show um but it's such a it's such a machine and i think it's so valuable as an actor who wants to do film and tv to really understand the other side of what goes on because it makes everyone's job easier at the end of the day as an actor if you can say you know you can be in that patient place if you can lend a helping hand in some way unless the union yells at you not to um (laughs) I think it's it's going to help you out. You know, people are going to want to work with you because you know what, what you're talking about. You know what's going on. Um, and you're not just, like, whining about, why are we doing this or why are we doing that, which that happens a lot, too. And there are a lot of very successful actors. Um, I won't name names, but yes. that, you know, will be on set and will be like, why are we not rolling? It's like, well, because um, camera's not set up and they need to readjust this lighting and your stand-in walked away and it's just what we have to do right now, unfortunately. You know, I know you're you're getting paid a measly, you know, $90,000 a day, but we just ask that you be patient. <laughs> so I want to take a step back for a second and uh, I want to talk a little bit about the networking aspect. Of, sure. So, you know, uh, how important is networking? Um Maybe, you know, like what kind of things maybe that you did, but then what, what people should be doing now to network, right. you know, like I'm particularly uh, if it's like a, you know, young actor or actress that's, you know, trying to break into independent films or something. What? Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things is to just be aware of what's going on in your town. So if you can, you know, be on backstage or be on any type of, blogging site about, you know, there's so many different networking parties that happen all the time with different filmmakers and actors. Um, So that's number one. If you are in a big network, such as LA or New York, there's a bunch of networking studios. Um, I happen to work at one in New York called the Actors Green Room. Um, And the thing is, it's like a lot of actors get out of school and they just assume that they're entitled to get in the room or entitled to, you know, go into these auditions without having formed any relationships with anyone and yes if you go to a few select names schools Mm -hmm. you're probably going to get representation right out of those schools you know you're going to be paying probably two hundred thousand dollars to go to those schools Mm -hmm. um but you know nothing is just handed to people and I think it's so important for actors to know that 
they need to go in and they need to be meeting casting directors. They need to be meeting agents and managers and know that it's not an overnight thing. You know, so we hear about these overnight successes of, of actors, um, whether it's an A-list or someone that you just see constantly working and you might not know their name, but you recognize their face. Right. Sure. Um, and you know, those people that you meet and you get to know, it takes, time it takes so much time like I've been taking classes at the actors green room for probably about three and a half four years now and just now I'm starting to get called in by those casting directors you know they have to really get to know and trust you because their job is to cast the project in the shortest amount of time right you know it's not their job to go out and meet every actor in New York it's not their job to go out and meet every actor in the United States of America like they are hired to do a job and they're hired to do that job in the, the least amount of time as possible. So what do they do? They go to the resources they know. Mm -hmm. They go to the actors that they trust, that they're, you know, they might, if they have a little bit extra time, they're working on a film versus a television project, they might take some chances on people if their look is very specific and very right and they have some strong credits and they have a good reel. But no one's just going to hand, you know, things to you. And that's why it's so important to not only be going to those networking studios, also submitting yourself to the student film, submitting yourself to the indie projects to pay no money mm -hmm. because that's another way to network with people. Um, get involved, make your own work, reach out to people um, and see who wants to lend a helping hand. Um, there's another, I'm like pitching the actor's reading right now. <laughs> but we have a 72 hour um, short film challenge that we do there. And uh -huh. you know, when you have three days to shoot something, um, and that's shoot and edit. Right, right. <laughs> Most of the time, you're going to shoot everything in a day or a day and a half. A lot of crew members who are looking to build their um, resume as well might be willing to work for little to nothing because they want the experience as well. Um, and it's just like it becomes a collaborative effort. It becomes kind of a passion project. Right. But being in the mud with those people and being in it and like working out things together, I think is one of the best ways to network as well, right? So, you know, not saying that people shouldn't be compensated for their time, but if everybody's kind of going in and it's a collaborative effort and you come out making something that everyone's proud of that can help forward everyone's career in some way, then I think it, it was a, a good thing. When you uh, network with people who, I mean, just generally speaking, who are the, uh, like, casting directors are obviously very important to network with. Yes. Who, who else? Who, who else should they be talking to? Because I think a lot of actors, they want to just talk to other actors, right? And they, right. they're like, hey, what roles did you put? Actors are not getting actors' jobs. Now, That's I right. mean, you know, maybe they'll re refer you to a friend or something. But right. so who are they talking to? Who, who should they be talking to? I think they should be talking to, you know, people that are in film school, people that, um, like I said, everyone on the other side of things. And that's why it's so important to get on these indie sets, to get on these small budget things and just talk to the people you're with, have that curiosity about what's going on around you, what's going on on that set. And it could be as simple as just introducing yourself. Like networking can be like such a scary thing. Like people right. hear the word networking and they're like, Oh my God. It's like, ask somebody a question. Like, how long have you been doing this? You know, what do you enjoy best about this? Sit and have lunch with someone that you don't know, you know? Right. It doesn't have to be this overthought thing. Just make a friend, you know? Right. And and through that, people will remember you. People will remember, you know, if you're nice to them, really, is sure. what it comes down to. And it's about not being a diva. <laughs> That's for men and women. Sure. Um, and just being easy to work with, someone who just, you know, and tr truly enjoys what they're doing and is right, in right. it with other people. I'm not saying that people don't get frustrated on set and that things don't happen where, you know, you might lose your shit. You might <laughs> not say that word. Um, <laughs> but, you know, for the most part, it's just, just be nice to people and just, just genuinely want to learn. Sure, and, sure. and through doing that, you'll meet people. And then uh, what part does like something like you know social media how, how does that play into your networking because yeah obviously you can make connections that way but it's not as personal as what you're talking about of course so how do you navigate that in addition to <laughs> yeah I think that Facebook and social media is a good way you know if you have met someone mm -hmm. then to add them okay. um it might be a mutual friend who you know you guys might have a mutual friend and but sometimes like I honestly, like, people reach out to me sometimes on Facebook, and I'm like, I have no idea who you are. This is a little creepy. Have we ever met? So, 
you have to kind of walk the line with that and know what's appropriate and what's not, you know, just like randomly messaging people who you see are like crew members or are, or as an agent or a casting director, it's like, unless they say to you, like, add me, or, you know, there's a conversation had, I don't necessarily think it's appropriate to just start adding people as friends. Right. Um, Twitter is a little bit more open. I think a good way to reach out to someone, if you've seen their work, maybe, and you really like it, you can drop them a little tweet and be like, hey, add so-and-so, saw this project, loved your work, you know, just those little things, and that might start a conversation as well. Um, I think you just have to really navigate that and know, you know, where the line is drawn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely the different platforms have their kind of different social right. graces, right? That's so, right. Yeah, That's no, right. I, I like that about Twitter, where you can just kind of, you can throw a comment at somebody and it's it's innocuous and you don't have to, like, go through the, the step of adding them to talk to them. It's just, exactly. you know, hey, Shannon, this was cool. Thanks. That's it. Yeah. And that might be it. Exactly. Right. So. And I mean, if you do say you find someone on Facebook and you, you know, you're like, oh, I would really like to work with this person. Maybe see if they have a website um, before you start, you know, stalking their personal page and (laughs) see like if there's a way that you can reach them via their website and you saw some of their work. And I think compliments are always a good way Right, to, right. to, you know, when, if you see something that you truly like and you want to work with that person, then, then compliment their work, you know? No one's going to get mad at you for saying that you liked what they did. Right, right. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your process. So whether it's, uh, I guess, you know, it all starts in the audition, right? So, so how do you approach an audition? And then maybe we'll talk about how that transforms, like, when you get that role, how that transforms to on set. So talk a little bit about that. So auditioning is like the most um, unnormal situation you'll ever be in in your life. (laughs) (laughs) So if you can just be aware of that and know that up front, you should be good. Just know that what happens in an audition room and what happens on set are like night and day. So what I do is... Um, you know, you'll normally receive sides. Um, sometimes they'll send you the whole script, which is very helpful. Um, read everything you can, get all of the information you can. If there's, if it's for a show that's already on TV, watch an episode of that show if you don't already watch it. Um, and just, just try and gather as much information. It's just doing your actor's work as you do in anything else. Um, learning the backstory, learning what's going on. I think a lot of people get caught up in, you know, we go to acting school and we're so much in our heads about like, well, this is my objective on this line and this is what I'm trying to do with this. Mm -hmm. But especially with film and TV, it's very, it's, you know, the stakes are there, but you you don't really have to do a lot, (laughs) you know, like you don't, you're not playing out to an audience of 500 people. You're, it's, it's not all in your eyes. It's all right there. Like the camera can see you. You don't have to do all this weird stuff to make people understand what's going on. Um, So step one is reading everything. And then for me, it's memorizing. So some people don't like to memorize until last, but I like to read and then just memorize my lines. So, um, and that's without anything in between. So I learned my lines like monologue style, do, 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 do. Um, And it's interesting because, you know, scripts um, in Shakespeare's time, as an actor, you would never get the other person's line. You would just get your cue and your lines. So that, as an actor, for me, I feel like if I know the cue and I know my line, it makes me listen. And what is the cue? So the cue would be the line before yours. Just the one line before. The one line or the word or whatever cues you into your line. Okay. Um, And that, as an actor, I think keeps you in the moment and keeps you listening to what's truly coming out of the other person's mouth and not Mm. anticipating and knowing what they're going to say. Now, can you know what they're going to say? Of course. Um, but for me, like I said, I just like to learn them that way so that I am a little bit more in the moment, especially for an audition. Okay. Now you'll go into some audition rooms and they'll be, you know, the most amazing reader in the world and they'll be giving you everything and they're, they're an awesome actor and they're just like feeding you everything you want. And it's just like an actor's dream to go in an audition room and have someone reading with you. But a lot of times you're going to go into the audition room and it's either going to be the casting director or it's going to be the director, depending on what it is, who's like not an actor reading the other lines. And it's your job to make something come to life in that space, right? Will they they read it 
dry a lot of times. Or yeah, you'll they be try. Like, it will be like a very emotional scene, and the other person's just like, um, okay. And you're like crying your eyes out to them. They're like, yeah. Like, just, <laughs> you're like, okay, thank you. So that's why it's good to have you know, the listening right. aspect, but also know that, like, you should also create a world for yourself because you never know what's going to be in the room with you. Okay. Um, so that's, that's my main process for auditioning and just knowing that I go in, I do what I can, I do what I know and let it go because so many actors get caught up in, like, well, I should have done this differently or I could have done this differently. One of the best things that that has helped me is mm -hmm. actually going to those networking classes because a lot of the time, most of the time you get filmed, like your scene gets filmed. And I've had so many times where I've been in a room and I've done the scene and the casting director, or I think it went horribly and the casting director will give me a note and I'll do it again. And in my mind, I'm like, Oh my God, that was so horrible. Like I flubbed this line. I did this. I feel like I, fe I fell on my face. Uh -huh. and then I watch it back and I'm like, Oh, that was, like, all in my head. It, it wasn't, like, yeah, I definitely, like, messed up a little bit, but it wasn't, like, I fell on my face like I thought. Right. So I think it's good to be aware of that and know, you know, that what's in your head and what's actually happening in the room isn't normally the same thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and especially because nerves come up in auditions and it's, like, you're trying to book a job. It's, like, look at it as, a, as an opportunity to, to perform, to do what you love, so you know? Do you ever do that for yourself, like, before you go to an audition, do you set up, you know, even your iPhone or something and, and shoot yourself doing the performance before um, an audition? I actually haven't. I mean, I, I self-tape a lot for auditions, sure. so, so yeah, that's, that's a good way. Met, that's how I met you. you yeah, you exactly. Did a, uh, so that's a good way video to, to submission. do things. <laughs> but, um, yeah, not, not specifically. Um, there is, I like to rehearse my lines in the mirror as okay. well because you can't lie to your own eyes. <laughs> Um, you know, there's this whole concept of, like, if you're looking into your eyes, you can, like, call your own bullshit, you know? Okay. If you're, like, saying a line a certain way and you're, like, yeah, that wasn't truthful. <laughs> um, there's an app that I actually use. It's called Rehearsal 2, um, like the number 2. Mm -hmm. um, and you can upload scripts onto it and you can record the other person's lines and rehearse with yourself. Oh, okay. So that's super helpful. Sure. Um, but, yeah, it's it, once you do the audition, just... I always rip up my sides and throw them in the trash on the street when I'm done mm -hmm. because you, as like 99% of the time you don't know, like they're not going to tell you if you didn't get it, right. you know, they're just, you're going to find out if you booked it and that's it. So sure. sitting around and, and milling over like, Oh my gosh, did I do enough in the room? Did I book it? I don't know. Let's see. You're going to drive yourself insane. Sure. So, and, and it's hard, you know, a lot of people are like, how do you do that? You're an actor. Like how I, I can't imagine what that's like, but it's just like on to the next, you know, my, my new motto, my recent motto is this or something better <laughs> because mm -hmm. what's meant for you won't pass you. Right. So if you're meant for this role and you're meant to do this project, you will get it, you know, yeah. and that's that. <laughs> so how does that all change when you do get that call and now you're on set, let's say for, uh, you know, let's say it's for a lead role, you know, yeah. Uh, what, what types of changes do you go about there? Like, who do you, who do you talk to? How do you work through the character more? To bring yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what, what the script is. So if it's something that's completely off your beaten path from what you normally do or, like, what's you as a person, mm -hmm. um, and it's about, like, creating a character or creating something that's outside of yourself, it's really important to give yourself um, circumstances that resonate with you. Um, I studied a little bit of Meisner, um, and that's all about your actor's fate. So putting yourself in a situation like, what if this happened? What if this happened? How would I feel? How would I go about this process? How would, you know, this person deal with this? And those are um, questions outside the script you're asking yourself? Yeah, for okay. sure. Um, they might not be written on the page, but you have to create those circumstances for yourself because you want to be a living, breathing character you don't want to be a flat I'm just saying the lines mm -hmm. um but it's interesting like when I get to set I definitely feel like from the audition to a set it's like I've dropped almost mm -hmm. if that makes sense um I feel like 
there's no like the stakes aren't like um am I booking this job it's like no you already have the job now just like sit back in it and be in it and be present and be there um and it's about being patient and knowing that you know you're gonna hurry up and wait a lot and that's the time where you can ask yourself those questions and it doesn't have to be you know oh I have to like write out a five-page essay about my character that might work for some people for me it's about getting in a space it might be just like closing my eyes and 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 listening to my thoughts about what would I do in this situation or how would I feel about this um and just just living that moment to moment I guess and and it's it's always good to know how to take direction and you know not ever get stuck in a space of like well this is a choice I made and it's the only choice I can make you know I'm sure well I know that drives directors crazy Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it's just knowing um to also be, you know, malleable. Like you want to have a basic idea of what's going on and make choices, but know that you might need to make another choice. Sure. And so during that kind of that hurry up and wait period on the set, so are you actively, what are you doing? What, like what? uh... Um, it truly just depends. I mean, if I'm really confident and comfortable with my lines, I've, I've learned them ahead of time. See, when I did a, a leading role in a feature film in Toronto um, a few years ago. And that, as an actor, you know, when you learn a script for a play, you have months of rehearsal and you're learning these lines and you're learning these scenes. But when you're on a set, you don't necessarily, like your rehearsal literally takes place before everything gets set up and then you have that time in between, right? Okay. So you rehearse the scene with whoever you're doing the scene with and then normally a stand-in will come in. If it's an indie film, you might be standing in for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and during that time in between is really like, okay, running through your lines, maybe you're running your lines for the next scene, you Mm -hmm. know, like, I think just reading it and, and knowing it viscerally, like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I know every single line in this whole script, but knowing what's going on is going to help you to get those lines when you need to, Right. right? right? So that you can jump in, okay the schedule changed all of a sudden now we're doing this scene all right you have 20 minutes like you better learn this <laughs> and, it might, and you might have to be honest with the crew and be like look guys I'm sorry this is not what I anticipated and just do the best you can and it'll eventually you'll get there but I think everyone understands the process of of how that works and if someone throws something on someone that they weren't anticipating it's like it might take a couple more minutes or a couple more takes to get it where it needs to be so as an actress what do you look for on set? Like, so, uh, you know, I just hear, I hear a lot of stories about, you know, this is my first indie film or this is my first web series or whatever they're doing. Yeah. And so, and you know, going in, obviously, that, uh, you know, this, this director or this producer or whatever, has, you know, this is their first project. So uh, they've, they've contacted you. They want you to come in. You know, what do you need to be on, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. When you're on set, like... I mean, I think you get to a point as an artist where you really need to know your value and you really need to know what you're worth and what you're not worth and what you want to do and what you don't want to do, right? Mm-hmm. So it's all about, you know, do I have the time to do this, step one. <laughs> um, the second thing is just knowing that you're going to need to be patient. Um, you know, I don't know if there's anything that I necessarily need um I guess it just comes down to being professional like I need people to be professional I need people to know their strengths and know their weaknesses and know that you know I if if you're a director and you're on set and you've literally never done this before like have the humility to know that and to learn from the people that do know right Mm -hmm. um learn from who's who's around you and you know obviously you can't have too many cooks in the kitchen because it gets a little wild but just listen to the advice of the people that are there that know what's going on that, that have done this once or twice before. Sure. Um, and yeah, just I just need people to be open and, and honest about what's going on. I think communication on set is key. Really like having someone who respects the time of everyone there, whether it's an AD who's like, okay, guys, we have 20 more minutes. We have to move on to the next scene, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, because no one wants to go to set and sit for 16 hours and shoot two pages, <laughs> which right. happens, right? Sure. Um, and that's when I think people get frustrated and, and stuff starts, like, emotions start getting involved. And it's like, 
it's this weird, you can feel the shift on set when that happens, right? We've all been there when, yeah. when something, something's not going right. And there's, there's always, there might be one person who's just like over it and rolling their eyes a little too much and huffing and puffing a little too much. And it's just like, okay, that just, it just brings the whole thing down, right, you right. know? So if everyone can just be enthusiastic about what's going on and, and know the boundaries and ask questions when they don't really know what's going on and having that curiosity, I think is the, is the best way to make everybody happy. Sure. Now, uh, between like a, an indie film set, like let's say like a micro budget crew. So you're, you're working with a crew. It's the, it's the director, the DP, and and you know maybe like so you know it might be a crew of three or four right as opposed to something like you know like a network show i don't know even how many people they might have on set at any one time but it's right. you know upward, <laughs> upwards of 30 people sometimes second so, second 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 right <laughs> so what are the different dynamics there like how do you as an actress like are, are you more involved like are you invited to be more involved or, or is there a general feeling of, of those two different types of sets? Yes. Um, so on the big sets, it's like everyone has their job and someone's job may be putting someone's shoes on and that is their only job. <laughs> and, and like that is, someone's job may be getting this one actor water. Like that is their only job all day. Wow. Um, and you know, on those sets, it's like, I think people have, have fun on those sets and mm-hmm. definitely, you know, do that but they know when it's time to work and it's like it snaps almost you know mm-hmm. so everyone's like ah, having a good time we're working you know okay. um and that's you know, important to know right that dynamic I mean, of course and that's and why knowing, it's good to get those background jobs to start yeah um, and to just to just watch i mean there's gonna be some crazy people on set it's always gonna happen when you're doing especially when you're doing background work and you're doing extra work and you're going to see some crazies and you're going to be around some people but you can also meet some amazing people in that situation that can really help you kind of navigate the ways of what's going on. Okay. Um, so just always be listening to what's going on. You know, be aware. They're, you know, they're, they might be bringing in, you know, a 200-pound lighting rig mm-hmm. across. Like, just be aware of your surroundings when you're on a set like that because there's just so much going on that you, you have to be. You can't right. just <laughs> and so be up you- in space or, like, on your phone or, you know. And so how do you use that information now that, like, let's, Let's say you go back to that micro-budget set. Right. And, and how does that translate? How do you bring that experience? How do you help the indie filmmaker? Um, I think it's important, um, you know, to know your boundaries. I always, when I go to a set, when I don't know the director and it's a, it's a micro-indie, you know, I'm always like, if you need anything, if you have any questions, like if anything comes up, like, let me know. And also, I, I always ask, you know, if you... A lot of times it's in the moment when I'm on set and I'll see something. It might be a continuity thing. It might be like, and I always ask permission, like, hey, I have a suggestion. Is it, do you care? Because some people get really like, no, like you're the actor. You stay in that place. You don't say anything. And other people love it. They're like, please, like, tell me, like, what what can we do here? What's going to make this better? Right. And they might take your suggestion or they might not, but mm-hmm. it's not about taking it personally. Um, I just like to communicate with the people that I am working with and and say, you know, I'm not like gloating, like I have all this experience on big sets. Um, But it's just like making suggestions when you see something that you're aware of because you've been on those sets and you see how things come together and how it works. Um, And, you know, not every micro budget set has a script supervisor and a continuity person. And, you know, it's, it's just, Lending a hand where you can, but not being overbearing, I think. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, obviously I've shot a couple smaller uh, micro-budget type things, and, and I have always love when somebody points something out, because, you know, at least you know that I'm aware what's going on, and, and, right. and it's not a mistake, you know, right. or and we've chosen person, to ignore it, or whatever. Right, and you might say something, and that person might be like, you know, I already know that I just haven't gotten to it yet because I can only do 20 things at once. (laughs) But that's why I think it's just good to, you know, even if you, you see something and maybe you're going to keep it to yourself for a little bit and just see, and then it's like, okay, guys, we're going to get ready to roll. That might be the moment to be like, Hey, I just see this thing. I want to make sure, you know, cause you don't want to, it's that fine line. It's the same thing with like messaging people on Facebook. Just like, no, you know, walk that line carefully and, you know, don't be arrogant, um, yeah. but 
but just know that it's a it's a team effort. It's a collaborative effort on sets, many sets, and right. I think a lot of actors go to these maybe smaller sets and they just literally, you know, they just sit back. Mm-hmm. Um, which for me, I'm like kind of jealous because I'm like, I wish I could do that on an indie set. <laughs> but I'm so I'm such the person who I like see stuff and I I want to be involved. I want to you know help make this the best thing possible because we're all doing it for little to no money. If we're going to make something, we might as well make something great. Right. right? And, you know, it's, it's just about being in the moment and seeing it and being aware of how things work so that you can contribute in that way. Right. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things that, you know, I really push as a, as a person and as a, as a producer and director is that, you know, if I'm going to do a small budget project and, and I'm paying you little or nothing, you know, I want to give you, whether you're the PA or the lead actor or, or the DP, I want to give you some ownership to the project. Right. You know, I want, I want you to feel like you're making this with us. It's not my right. movie. Because like, at right. the end of the day, who's going to put their name on the, you know, directed by... John Fallon, you know, and, and I'm right. going to take, like, whatever. You see the whole crew, and it's just right. you, if you're acting in every part. <laughs> right, so, so I want to give, I want to give out my collaborators a way to collaborate, and that's I think right. that's very important for indie film sets, I mean, because I think on the, on the flip side, the, you know, the director straight out of college can do the same thing, where they, you know, can be a little bit of a diva, and, and this is what I'm going to do, I, I studied so-and-so director, and we're going to do it this way, and... I'm not going to break character, basically. And then, right. you know, those are the films that tank or, you know, they don't get finished or, right. you know, somebody storms off set and you got half a film and you got to... Sh- <laughs> so, yeah, right. so I think that's very important. I think all that stuff is great. I mean, I think that's really yeah, good advice. Yeah, and I think that might be something for indie filmmakers to, to know up front, you know, and especially people that are just coming out of school. Just be open and, and be be aware that, people might know more than you (laughs) and that's okay. And that's not a bad thing. You know, those are the people that you can learn from. That's how I've learned pretty much everything I know about this industry is from learning from people around me. And I think that's how most people learn. It's not like, Oh, I went to this school. So now all of a sudden I have an Oscar winning film. It's like, no, people are in there doing it and, and learning as they go. Um, so from the other side of things, I guess you asked me earlier what I would like from a director. So I think that that's exactly it is like the permission maybe up front, like this is a collaborative effort. We want everyone to be involved in any way that they can. You know, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. And I think having that open line of communication from the director side first is so important um, because a lot of actors are very, like I said, they go to set and they're like, I'm just an actor. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. So having that permission um, is definitely important. So I think this is a great segue into uh, your you know newer role that you you want to get into as, as a producer. So talk to me a little bit about how that's evolving. What you know what you're doing. Yeah. To, to kind of nurture um, that. So right now I'm actually getting ready to do. It's one of the three day seventy two hour film challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a we're starting shooting a week from Friday, um, and it's really, you know, it's a lot of just being organized. <laughs> And, and reaching out to people and finding people. Um, most of the people that I'm using on this particular film, um, it's a little bit of a collaborative effort. You know, there's there's me and another actress who, who originally were like, let's do this together. And then another actress was like, I would love to like be your like head producer on this. Mm-hmm. Like just someone that we can point to. So when we are on set, we're in the acting space and not the producing space. Sure. Um, but it's just really it's been pretty easy. (laughs) I don't want to like jinx myself. Um, you know, finances can always be like a pretty big issue for people, I think. Um, but knowing what your budget is and sticking to your budget up front is like step one, you know, don't be like, Oh yeah, we're doing this film. The budget's $20,000 and like not have Mm $20,000, you know, because if, you know, if, you're hiring people. This is when actors go in and audition for stuff and then they might shoot a scene and then it's like five years later and the film's still not made because the finance wasn't there. So I think it's very important because you can be ambitious. You can do stuff. It's 
do what you can in your realm of whatever that is. So if you're like, I have a grand and I want to make this script happen, you know, you might not be, you might have to adjust things. You might have to make things a little bit less crazy. Um, you might have to have one location. Um, two months ago we did like a post-apocalyptic film. There were, I believe eight actors, but it was one location. It was on a roof. Um, and with that, it was, you know, locations is huge. If you can, if you have friends that have a roof you can borrow or a restaurant or a house, it's like, it's all about coming back to the networking and knowing sure. people and knowing who you can reach out to and ask for help. Um, cause let's face it, a lot of people that are in this industry, it's like, yeah, I can do you this favor and like, maybe they can do something, you know, it's like kind of a give and take. Um, so this process for me, you know, SAG paperwork, let me talk about that. <laughs> I think so many indie filmmakers think they hear SAG paperwork and they're like, oh, this is so much. I don't want to have to file this. I don't want to have to go through all this and like the union and it's bad. Um, I'm telling you, it's so simple. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of times when people approach me about doing projects and I ask if it's union and they say no and I unfortunately have to turn them down, even if the script is great. Um, and it's, it's not because I don't want to do it. It's just because my union prevents me from doing non-union work. Um, but all you have to do, it's super simple. If your budget's under a certain amount, I believe it's under $10,000. You literally go onto the SAG website, you download paperwork. Um, you write the actor's names that are SAG. You write their SAG number and their phone number. Um, and you write the dates that you're shooting and you fax it back to SAG. And that's it. That's literally it. Like it's so simple. Um, and the only stipulations on it is if the film makes money, then you have to pay your actors or you have to pay the people that are in the union. And it doesn't have to be like, well, if we make this much money, we have to pay them this much. It's like, no, it's a percentage of what the film makes. If the film makes a dollar and this actor gets 10%, they get a dime. <laughs> That's it. You know, like you're not going to be losing money using SAG actors. Um, and it just, it protects everybody, you know especially from the acting standpoint, um, I know I'm not going to be sitting on set for 16 hours not being fed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I'm not going to be made to um, do my own stunts, like riding down, you know, a staircase mm -hmm. um, and not, you know what I mean? It's just, sure. it's just basic protection. And I mean, we've heard the horror stories and we know, you know, unfortunately things happen even on professional sets and right. people step out of line and they don't know what they're doing. And, people sometimes get killed, um, which is very sad, but it's like, it comes down to the safety of everybody. Um, and if you want to use union actors, you're going to get quality work and you know, you're going to have people that know what they're doing on your set. So that's, that's a good thing to tell indie filmmakers. Um, but yeah, I mean, we filled out our paperwork in one day. It was so simple. Um, right now it's just, we have a spreadsheet okay, this is how much we have for this. And it's like, what do we need bare minimum? Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing this, I think our budget is like $2,500. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. small. So we're, we're going back to, you know, just, just if you're hiring crew, if you're hiring actors, just know what your budget is and know that you, you can't, you know, even if you really want somebody, unless you're like, okay, I guess I might be able to grab some money from here. Like, don't, put that on yourself and then get halfway through the film and not be able to pay for editing or not be able to pay for, you know, a sound design or submitting to festivals or color correcting or anything like that. You know, you have to have all of that in place up front or else you're going to end up with a half made film. Hmm. Now, uh, are you, are you writing films also or are you? Like I'm not writing right now. I, um, I, this one was kind of like a dual concept that me and my friend had. And then we knew a writer that we had met through doing this, um, this film challenge okay. who we really liked. And we, we commissioned him to, to write a script for us. Right. Um, but I think uh, there are a lot of actors that do write. And mm -hmm. I think it's important, even if you're not writing yourself to still conceptualize things and have an idea of like what kind of roles you want to do. And then if you necessarily don't have the time or the skill to write a full script, have an idea of what you want and then find someone that can help you. And that comes back to networking again. So th then why did you get into producing? Is it, is it to get roles that you really um, wanted or what, what was, well, what was the genesis for that step? 
I think a lot of um, actors wait around for roles and wait for other people. And I think, you know, we can, as actors, be empowered to make our own stuff. And we can say, I want to play this role. You know, I want to be doing my own stuff. I don't want to wait to get cast in something and sit around and be like, okay, well, what are you doing this month? Oh, just waiting to get cast in something. You know, if you can really say instead, no, I'm producing a film and I'm doing something. And it might not be a feature. It Mm -hmm. might be a 13-page short, which is exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But now I know I'm doing something. I get to act. I get to be on set. I'm learning from other people. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm meeting crew members. I'm, you know, going through that process, which is only going to help me as an artist and an actor in the long run. Right. Well... Uh, I want to touch on one more thing before we wrap this up. Uh, I know that the your your teaching and this whole uh, spiritual kind of uh, <laughs> thing that you you kind of clued me in on the other day is very important to you. So, do you want to talk about that a little bit and tell yeah, us what absolutely. that is and how so, that affects? Um, what it is is it's called the Create series, um, and it's basically holistic tools to empower actors mm-hmm. um, or anybody in, in the industry or not. My husband is not in the industry. He still comes to classes. Um, but it's really about um, getting in the headspace of, you know, knowing your worth, knowing that your ego which is the voice that talks to you in your head and tells you you're not good enough and that you suck, (laughs) is not who you truly are. And who you truly are is um, your spirit or your soul or that light inside of you that never changes, that watches you your whole life. And that's another thing that's super important to have when you walk into an audition room is to just truly be in that space. People can see that. You know, they can see when you're like hiding because you're scared and your ego's talking to you or when you're just present Mm -hmm. and you're just like, hi, it's nice to meet you. You know, I may completely mess up this audition, but I am in me right now. (laughs) And that's that, you know. Um, So what we two classes two times a week, um, Sunday nights from seven to nine and Mm -hmm. Tuesday mornings from 11 to one. They're all at the actor's green room. Um, and it's basically, it's a community. It's a networking space for people, artists to come together and to work through their shit. (laughs) Really. (laughs) Um, you know, there's different topics every week. This week's topic is what is the most important question of your life? Um, which I won't divulge too much because people <laughs> might be coming to see it. Um, but last week our topic was value. Um, and it's all about standing for your worth and standing for your value and what's in alignment with what you see for yourself. Mm-hmm. And knowing that um, your dream is not detached from you. So a lot of times I see it as this, or we explain it as this, is that people say, well, when I get to this point in my career, then I'll be happy. When I book this role, then I'll have made it, or I'll be a working actor, I'll be a professional. Mm -hmm. It's like, instead of taking that and making it, well, when I get to there, it's bringing it to you and saying, I'm going to live as this now Mm -hmm. and bring that thing to me. Because what we're doing by separating it is just doing this. We move forward. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're always going to be separate from it and you're never going to be fulfilled and happy. And I think that regardless of whether you're making films or like counting money at a bank or serving tables or, um, operating on someone's heart, Mm -hmm. it's, it's about this life is about being in touch with your truest self and being happy, just being you, Mm -hmm. you know, you shouldn't have to have validation from the outside world to make, to feel good. Right. Um, And so much of the time we do look for that outside validation, but what we can do is do the work on the inside and what's going to happen is the world has to reflect back to you what you're working on on the inside. So that's kind of a little bit of a a preview. There's a, there's a lot, there's, there's meditations, there's exercises, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff we can't see in ourselves that other people can see in us. Like I can look at you, John, and say, you are an amazing director. Like I see you doing amazing, huge films at, you know, at studios and, but you might not be able to see that for yourself, but Mm -hmm. I can see that for you and I can stand for that for you Mm -hmm. and vice versa. And I can say, well, I'm, you know, I'm an okay actor. And you're like, no, Shannon, you're an amazing actor. You can see that, you know, but we can't always see that for ourselves because our ego talks to us. So Mm -hmm. it's getting in community with people and really reflecting to each other what, what our truths are. And how has that helped you in your, in your, Um, well, I think it's definitely, it's, 
it's gotten me to a point where I'm not looking for validation on the outside and I'm not looking for like, well, if I book this, then I'll, then I'll have made it. It's <laughs> just, I'm living, I'm living now and I'm living in the moment and I'm taking everything day by day and what comes to me in a flow really, you know, and, and I'm happy because of it. I'm not down on myself like, oh, I didn't get that, that audition I went in for. Or I didn't get this. Obviously there's still you know, we're not like living in like airy fairy land where everything's perfect. Like we still have negative emotions and there's nothing saying that, um, those negative emotions are any better or worse than a positive emotion. Mm -hmm. Like if you're mad, you're mad. That doesn't mean that it's bad. That's Mm -hmm. just what you have to go through. You have to, you know, instead of pushing it down, you're going through your anger and then you get through on the other side. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just, it's been eye opening for me to, to know that I can, I can take the reins on my career, on my life, and and really just be in the present moment. Yeah, no, it sounds very empowering for sure. Yeah, it it definitely <laughs> is. I hope I explained it enough. It's kind of like yeah, no, I think it's, it's an some... interesting. It's like a it's an abstract concept for sure. And yeah. some people are gonna latch onto it. And some people are gonna be like, and right, you right. know, for me, it's crazy too. I say this to a lot of people like a year and a half ago before I started doing this and, and started teaching it I was I was an atheist I believed in nothing mm-hmm. I was like nope so <laughs> it is possible you know if that's where you're at now that's where you're at and that's your process and there's nothing wrong with that but you know I've seen the change in my own life and I've seen the positivity that it's that's brought to my life so I can't not do it <laughs> <laughs> and not share it because sure. it's so empowering and I want people to be happy (laughs) so is there anything that we didn't touch on that you've uh you'd really like to impart some advice or uh... um i don't think hmm, that's a good question i think it just comes down to just be yourself live in the moment have fun and be nice to people (laughs) (laughs) it's always good being nice to people so how can uh how can people be nice to you how can they reach out and uh I love that. People can be nice to me on Twitter, on Instagram, at Shan the Ham, S-H-A-N-T-H-E-H-A-M-M. Um, also, I have a Facebook fan page, Shannon Ham. And then if you want to check out my website and maybe message me there instead of on Facebook, <laughs> my website is shannonham.com. Nice. So we look forward to seeing you in some really great stuff soon. And uh <laughs> Good luck with your 72-hour challenge. And, uh, thank you. Thank and you your, very much. Uh, your foray into producing. I, I know it's going to be excellent. I'm excited. I'm <laughs> excited. I ha- You know, you have to do it sometime, right? That's right. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thanks. I'm so happy that I got to bring on Shannon Ham and have such a great conversation with her. Shannon's attitude towards filmmaking and her work ethic should be an inspiration to anyone who wants to jump into this crazy business. One of the things I hope you notice when you listen to all these interviews with filmmakers from around the country is that most people who are successful value cultivating strong and mutually beneficial relationships with other people in the business. This is especially true in indie filmmaking because resources are so thin and everyone is trying to scrape together the essentials to get their film done. There simply isn't enough time to deal with the drama and waste because that can be the death of a production. It's my hope that people find this podcast and the website and find ways to connect with each other so that we can cultivate those kinds of relationships here as well. If there are any ways that Indie Film NYC can expand and offer you something that you feel is lacking, please reach out and let me know. You can do that by leaving a comment on any of the show pages, emailing me at john at indiefilmnyc.com, contacting me on Twitter at indiefilmnyc, Or go to the contact page on the website at IndieFilmNYC.com forward slash contact. I hope to hear your thoughts. The Indie Film NYC podcast is available on both iTunes and Stitcher. So if this podcast is interesting or useful to you, then please subscribe. And if you can give us a rating and review, that would be even better. Because it will help more people find us and spread the word. And of course... Please check out the other blog posts and filmmaking information that's available on our growing website, IndieFilmNYC.com. Thanks for listening.